Looking at <clears throat> Philippians chapter 1 on my iPad, and I want to draw your attention to a few things that may be an encouragement or help to you. Whenever we read the Bible, we want to know that we are kind of wondering who is writing, who's talking. Paul's the main author. Uh, Timothy is with him. They qualify themselves as simply the servants of Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful uh, perspective to have and understanding their point and purpose, existence for existence in life. And they're writing uh, to all the saints, all the saved, all the redeemed, the made right with God people that are in Christ Jesus, um, specifically here to the ones that are in Philippi. Uh, and this is, uh, this is I, I read this week, just some of the things you forget, but this is a, a, a part of Macedonia, and this is going to be important because in Acts, um, we can see how they partnered with Paul because he talks about that here in this, but it's with them, and, the, and he's talking to the bishops and the deacons, the people who oversee the church, uh, and the people who serve, you know, the deacons, Acts chapter 6, 7, uh, whichever one that is, um, <clears throat> talk to you about the deacons and what they do in meeting the needs of the church so that the bishops can uh, give themselves to prayer and the study of the Word of God. And then they have this greeting, grace to you, peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's some importance there um, in this kind of classic greeting that Paul gives, but I won't spend a lot of time there. Um, he lets them know up front in this kind of greeting that he, he thanks God for every remembrance. You know, his daydreams, his thoughts. When he thinks about the church of Philippi, he goes, man, God, thank you so much for this church. And then he wants them to know that you're always in every prayer of mine. Uh, when I'm praying for you, uh, I'm making requests with joy. And we're going to see this word joy up here a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, in the book of Philippians as uh, really, the, the, the thought of this uh, is joy in suffering, which is something unique to Christianity. Uh, we don't see this in other places. When people suffer, they're upset, they're angry, they're annoyed, they're frustrated. But that we can suffer and have joy at the same time because joy isn't based on our circumstances. Joy is based on Jesus uh, being in us or us being in Jesus. Both of those things are true. So he's making requests with joy. Uh, why, why is he so joyful? Why is he so excited? Why, why, when he prays for them, is his heart kind of lifted? And he thinks, man, this is awesome. Well, it's because of or for their fellowship in the gospel. Now, this word fellowship is the idea uh, of a partnership and a common, a common goal that they have. Um, from the first day, <clears throat> like when they got saved, when Paul was first there on the riverbanks with Lydia, uh, the seller of purple, you can read in uh, the book of Acts, and she got saved, and they began, people began to meet and grow. From the first day, they received the message of Christ, and they're, and they're growing and partnering, and they're together in this. They're co-laborers and fellow soldiers of Jesus Christ. Um, from the first day until now, I'm I'm thankful. What a blessing uh, for your fellowship. And then he wants them to know that I'm praying and that I am confident of this thing. Um, that he, speaking of God, or the Spirit of God that lives inside of them, which hath begun a good work in you, that is, we know that the Spirit indwells us uh, when we are saved according uh, to like Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> that the one that lives in us, uh, Colossians 1, uh, talks about uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, this, <clears throat> he's in you, and he's performing this, this work. Um, the work will be performed. Uh, he'll perform it when? Until... The day of Jesus Christ, until the return of Jesus Christ, or until we, until we see Jesus. You know, it may be that we die before He returns, um, but this is a promise uh, that we have from God. This is something um, 
that we can be sure of, a promise that we have from God, that he is, uh, he is in us, uh, he's working on us, he's not done with us, um, and it will be continual uh, for the rest of our lives. And what a, what a wonderful blessing that is. And then he says, it's meat, or it's, it's necessary for me to think this of you all. Why? Well, because uh, I have you in my heart. You know, another way to, you know, the way we might say this, because I, I, I love you. You know, you're, you're such a part of my life. You're a huge part of my story. I think about the people of our church, even people that have come and gone, even people that are distance right now. Um, and, and so many of them, some, some there's, there's not a deep connection. And, and, and part of the reason is, um, and, and this, this is going to sound weird or bad, um, maybe a little bit, but it has to do with this, I think, the fellowship of the gospel, this partnership. This is a, this is a calling on our life, and we see it together, and we work together, shoulder to shoulder, down in the trenches. Um, and and he, he says, I have you in my, I have you in my heart. You get it. We beat uh, my heart, our hearts beat the same way. Um, and uh, he says here that he's, he's in both in my, uh, he's in, in my bonds, or in my heart and my bond, and the bonds are in when he's in prison. And that's where he's at right now, writing from. And he says, in, in the defense and confirmation of the gospels, we're defending the gospel, confirming that this is true. Uh, you all are partakers of my grace. We're in this together and we're experiencing this together. And the things that I'm experiencing because of your, uh, because of your partnership, <laughs> uh, because of your fellowship and your commonness and we're, t we're in this work together. I may be in Philippi or you may be in Philippi and I may be in prison, uh, but we are all partaking in this work together of what God is doing. And then he just says this, God, is my record. You know, God's my witness. God is the God honest truth, someone might, you know, might say. I long after you uh, in the in the bowels with the heart of Jesus Christ. Now we say like, I love you with all my heart. Back in this time, uh, you know, people would say, I love you with all my guts. I love you with all my spleen. Uh, the heart of Jesus Christ. And so this kind of is that first uh, section. Uh, and then he says here, uh, in in verse nine, he says, "And this I pray." Hey, I want to know. I'm uh, up here. We might say that he's thankful. You know, this is a greeting. Let's let's go up here first. Greeting, and then he's thankful um, and joyful for them. Just kind of getting into where where he's going. Uh, man, we're in this together. We love you. You're my you're my friends. You're my favorite. Uh, and then he says, "And this I pray." So now he's moving into a prayer that he has for them. He says, I'm hoping that your love will abound uh, more and more in knowledge. This is the, if we can kind of maybe just say the information uh, uh, about God, about the things of God, uh, about what God is doing in this, uh, in this world, about what the focus of our life needs to be, of the big picture of things, not getting caught up in, uh, momentary struggles or issues, but keeping the big question uh, in, in knowledge and in judgment or discernment, being able to, to kind of see with spiritual eyes what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, what I should be a part of. And I'm also praying, he's, in, he's we see this word that, you love me about, and then the second request uh, is uh, that, whoops, I have clicked on the screen, there we go, uh, that you may approve I mean, but you can discover, you can select, you can stamp with your seal of approval the things that are excellent, the things that are noble, the things that are right, uh, and that you may be sincere. This is a, this is a, a neat word, uh, this word sincere here. Um, it means to be without wax. Sometimes uh, they would take pottery in the Old Testament or in the Bible times and pottery that was cracked or had flaws in it, they would fill it with wax um, and then they would kind of paint over it and then it would sell it as like being great, perfect. But you could hold a light up to it um, and it would shine and in, you know, inside it would kind of shine out and you could see where the cracks were. And, and that word sincere means to be without wax. Like we're not putting on a show. We're not, 
we're not faking it. We're not living two lives, but we're one authentic Christ-filled life. And that we would also live, uh, that we'd be sincere, the real deal, and that we'd be without offense. You know, that we'd be careful how we behave ourselves and that we would treat others, uh, you know, love God and love others until the day of Jesus Christ. This is until the day of Christ's return. We see this, this is the second time um, that this is mentioned. I'm going to draw this little line up to here, <laughs> right here. Uh, and he goes, I'm also praying, oh, I did it again, that you'll be, uh, I'm praying that you'll be uh, filled, fill your life, your heart, your soul um, will be filled with the fruits of righteousness. Uh, you know, Galatians 5 tells us what those are, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Um, and, and how do we get those? Do I discipline myself? Do I train myself? Do I work real hard? No, uh, he just says right here, they're by Jesus Christ. Uh, they come by Christ. They come by abiding in him, John 15. Uh, and what does that mean? It means that God is enough, uh, that I'm trusting in him, that I'm resting in him, that I'm striving through life to gain my holiness or my standing with God, that I have it because of Christ, um, and that um, I'm not trying to find my security and significance in the material possessions of this world. Uh, I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I'm not trying to do my will. Uh, I am, uh, I'm, the, I'm the servant of Jesus Christ, so up in verse 1. Um, and I am his vessel uh, that is just living a, 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 re a good, sincere reflection and loving people. Uh, and he is, and just a, as I abide in him, his fruits produced in me. And I do this unto the glory and the praise of God. So that, uh, so that when people see my life, they give God a five-star review. They say, they say, man, God, you know, that's what my life says. I love God. God is enough. I give him five stars. Everything I need, he takes care of. He's my friend. He's my counselor. He's my confidant. Uh, he's my healer. He's, he, he gives me mercy and grace and love. Uh, and, and, and I'm satisfied with God. I'm satisfied with God. And this is, I praise him. And hopefully, according to Matthew 5, 16, as I let my light so shine before men, that they may see my good works, uh, these fruits of righteousness, which I don't even do. They're, they're Christ, it's his joy in me, his love in me, his hope in me, according to John 15, uh, as I rest in him being enough. Uh, and it all comes back to the glory, the story of glory, to the glory of God. He's God. Uh, he alone can satisfy. And we praise him and we worship him. This is Paul's prayer for the, for the church at Philippi. This is what the first 11 verses mean. Some of your Bibles will have this little paragraph symbol, uh, and, and it kind of indicates a different a break in thought or a different paragraph. Uh, see how this one was kind of about thankfulness here in verse 9? Uh, I, I like to look for a Bible that has this because it does help me uh, mentally. Some of yours will have headings that the authors have added in, you know, people have added into that. Um, but now in verse 12, he's going to get to a different thought. We can kind of look at that next but I would, you should understand. He's like, I want to tell you a few things. And he's, and he's going to talk about that down here uh, in verse 12. I got to get a better picture of that so I can get the verse 12 right at the top uh, for you on that next page. But there is Philippians 1 through, uh, through 12, or 10, 11, excuse me. And um, this is from the Blue Letter Bible. I have just a screenshot. I'm writing on my iPad. And I hope this is a, a help to whoever.